Hey everyone, Nikki Johnson with KX News. I'm joined today with Brandy Jude from Invisible Innocence. Uh, January is Human Trafficking Awareness Month, and so the last few weeks we've been talking to you about um, what human trafficking is and uh, how people are affected. This week we're talking about um, where p people are getting trafficked. Yeah. Absolutely. And actually right now we're outside of a gas station um, and, it be, and we wanted to kind of just like brave the elements with you so you can kind of get an idea of uh, what people go through. Yeah, absolutely. So a lot of times when we start having that conversation about human trafficking, one of the first things that pops into mind is, well, how did they even get into that situation and where is this happening? If something so horrific was happening in my community, I would be able to spot it. Why can't I see where it's happening? And really, a lot of times it's happening in plain sight. You know, it's an invisible thing that we are interacting with almost daily. Um, and when we're thinking about where <clears throat> and how, when we think about how traffickers target vulnerabilities, one of the things that we don't maybe think of are some of those vulnerabilities may be as simple as the weather elements. If you're a runaway and you're not able to get into a shelter or you're trying to avoid um, contact with authority, authoritative figures, you're going to try to seek shelter and refuge um, maybe somewhere outside or in a gas station bathroom or you're going to try to seek refuge with an individual who may show you that they're not going to hurt you, they're not going to turn you in, you know, they're just trying to provide food and shelter f towards you. And so a lot of times when there are runaways specifically, they're they're really vulnerable to, to that incident uh, or to just basic life needs. Yeah. Um, where it's happening in North Dakota, mm -hmm. a lot of times we just think that there's a brothel or maybe it's happening in, in nail salons is one I hear pretty frequently. <clears throat> But really, the top three venues for sex trafficking, for example, are in people's homes, mm. um, online escorts, mm. um, which is, has reduced down since we have um, Craigslist has been shut down and right. Backpages has been shut down. Um, but another one is hotels and motels. So when we're thinking about um, where this is happening, it's happening in our homes. Yeah. And that is something it's hard to stomach because we don't want to think about it happening in our backyards. Right. But it, it really is. Um, other places, it's happening at truck stops. There are a number of people who drive truck for a living and they're a prime target for a trafficker to approach and yeah. want to sell one of their one of their victims to. You know, they're on the road for long periods of time. They're alone most of the time. They are usually traveling with another person. And so it's it's almost like an easy sell. So those are some of the prime locations. Um <clears throat> When we're thinking about labor trafficking, cases that have come out of North Dakota, where they've happened have been hotel or yeah, service industries. Um, that's hotels, that's restaurants, small businesses, landscaping or construction companies. It's disposable labor. So when you're looking at those industries, you're looking for people that you can essentially use for long hours. You are able to kind of skirt around labor laws with breaks and wages. Um, another one would be um, agriculture. <clears throat> it's easy to hide people on a lot of land. Wow. And so when we're thinking about these cases that are coming out of North Dakota, we're thinking, you, you know, it's not just someone being thrown in a van and then taken to a strip club or taken right. across the world, which those cases do happen, but it absolutely is happening here in our communities. I do also want to point out one thing with where. We have <clears throat> different um, sovereign nations in North Dakota and the Supreme Court has stripped away the rights for Native American law enforcement to prosecute or arrest people for crimes who are non-native. So when we're thinking about where, if you are understanding where you can get away with crimes, then 
people going, people who are non-native going on these reservations are able to really do their operations of sex or labor trafficking from there without really a fear or worry that they're going to have any sort of repercussion taking place. Um, and so when we're thinking about the how, how then, well then you are in an area where poverty is higher, <clears throat> the the risks of um, addiction or homelessness or higher economic stability are lower. So there's a lot of vulnerabilities mm -hmm. and there's also a lot of opportunities on our reservations here in North Dakota. Wow, that is pretty wild. Yeah. What was crazy to me a little bit ago is you were saying how like, <clears throat> truck drivers and things like that, um, I, and I had no idea, you know, yeah. this has really been eye opening for me, you know, as we're sharing this, like one truck driver just literally drove up like right while we were sitting here. And yeah. so, um, but yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy. Like it's happening here in, right. and you said in our backyards even. Yeah, absolutely. There, <clears throat> excuse me, there is a hotline. It's the human trafficking or excuse me, the national human trafficking hotline. And if you go on there, it actually shows you how many cases have been reported and where those venues are from year to year, from 2007 to 2018 mm. are the most recent stats. And I think it's important for everyone to go on that website yeah. and check out where the venues are because they change from year to year. So when you can see a trend with the changes of the venues and the number of cases reported uh, alongside with the policies that are implemented or laws that are implemented mm -hmm. during our legislative session. Um, and so the, again, that hotline is National Human Trafficking right. uh, Hotline. And I just, I love going to that because sometimes you just need to see those numbers to correlate with w that information that you're provided because it is happening here. It is something that um, many people are vulnerable to and it's not um, just their problem. It's all of yeah. our problem. It's a community yeah. problem that we need to continue addressing and, and, appro mm -hmm. and then pr appropriately providing services to victims, whether they're male or female or, you know, no matter how they're identifying and, and no matter what their ethnic background is, we need to be showing them support and, and treating people with dignity when they are coming yeah. out of the life. That's so good. Well, thanks again so much for your Absolutely. time and for raising awareness about uh, what's going on here in our state regarding human trafficking. So make sure you guys tune in next week uh, so you can figure out how you can get involved now.